please tweet in your questions about your work and your creative process, and Brittany will tell you where or what hashtag or whatever the fuck. <laughs> All right, guys, so if you want to tweet in questions as we're doing this, comments, concerns, or if you want to uh, watch me live tweet what's going on, uh, it is, the Twitter handle is WatchMeWorkSLP. Uh, if you want to uh, send in questions, it's hashtag new play or hashtag WatchMeWork. So I'll see you on there. Yeah. <laughs> Jared got really cool. Jared, so cool. I know you like that cool. You're you so are cool. cool. You're so cool. This is what happens when you hang out in public meetings. You got, you're like cool now. The internet's hearing about it. Anyway, okay, okay, no more fun. Because we're serious. I'm going to put on my serious face. Now it hurts. Um, I'm going to work. And basically, you're, you're going to work on whatever you're doing, whatever you're working on, whether it's music, writing, or you're making that basket, finally. Oh. Do I have an actual timer? Not my phone. I bring pro I mean, I have like things, but actually, maybe I can find it. Oh, here it is. Great. What did I say? 10, 15, 20 minutes? Did I say? Okay. It's a good time. This is the kind that doesn't distract me. Okay. Part of it actually. Isn't it part of the show? Yeah. Watch me get ready for work. Watch me load the paper in the typewriter. So we know why this show was started, right? It was started because um, a lot of people wonder what is it like to be a writer. And I've learned a lot from writing by I learned a lot from other in other disciplines by watching people work. Like if you want to become a better tennis player, you practice and you go and watch, you know, Serena play tennis, for example. And so this is actually a proven thing. I'm not just making it up and talking out of my ass. But and so uh, I thought, well, we should do the same thing for writers. Instead of just experiencing our work, having work, watch me, watch what I've done recently. You know, read my book or whatever. To actually watch us do this. And the other thing about this show is the me in the title is you. Okay. Let's begin. You ready? You ready, Brittany? So you, ready. You like texting. Get up. I'm not like tweeting. Who talks about don't this? Don't go. Okay. <laughs> okay. At least you're not driving. Okay, here we go. Ready? Ah. Uh. go. Okay, let's go.
talking part. Uh, thank Len for the, the she's like Richard Bean. <laughs> Oh, it's not for me? No. I, th I wish he, he were just here. I w he still has the dog he gave him. Uh, or she sleeps with him in his bed. I looked up, um, I looked up on my, thanks Lynn for the, the, the standards and the grapes. And I looked up on my phone um, that uh, quotation from You have to remind me of him one more time, and then I'll remember it. Shamar. Shamar is one of my students at NYU, and um, you'll get used to it. I know. I have. I've gotten used to it. So, anybody have any or answers or, or, or need to sit here in silence? So what's your name? Emily. Emily. Are you related to Emily Dickinson? I was named after her. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Great. See, wow. the panda. <laughs> the panda got a hit on that. Yeah. Wow. wow. You were named after Emily Dickinson. What's your favorite Emily Dickinson poem? Do you have one, or do you even like her? Or? asking a question, we're just repeating the questions for the, the sound. Thanks, Matt. Um, um, Emily's have, has a question about action, identifying action, and in my own writing, how do I know what they should be doing? <laughs> yeah, or, or what do you feel like you need to know about events before you can write? Okay, great. What do I need to know about events before I can write? First, I need to know what you're talking about. What, what do I need to know? No, no, it's okay, but it's not because you're asking it the wrong way. I just, I'm not familiar with the term when it's used that way. What do I need to know e about event? Like, what do I need to know about what, what the frick is going on in the play? Yeah. Like that. Uh, like, what, what's the story? Like that? Yeah. Kind of? Like, so I'm guessing that, Emily, that you have some care. Like, say you're writing a play, are we correct? Okay. So that you're... Um, you have some characters, maybe? Yeah. And they, okay, and they maybe are, you know kind of where they're hanging out, maybe? And you're wondering, but what are they doing? Or what story are they telling? I guess I'm trying to get to what you're talking about. Yeah. This is exactly 
exactly we're, all we're doing is wasting time. This is what we do. We get together, um, you know, on Monday evenings, and we waste time together. And we go home and we feel a little better. This is what we do. This is what, you know, you're a writer, right? As my teachers used to say, shake your head this way. <laughs> Just give into it. Let allow gravity and your, you know, resistance of gravity take over. Just you're a writer. You are. You're sitting here. You've come this far. You're a writer. Okay. So a bit you mean by like you got some great characters and you're wondering what's the story? What's it about? Like that? <coughs> okay. So I I find event by asking myself what do the characters want? What do they want more than anything else in the whole world? Like that. Does that make sense? Can you ask yourself that about your wonderful characters that you have created and you fall in love with? Can you ask that about your characters? Does that make sense? And can you see yourself answering that question if you haven't already? You can say, Yeah, I think that is in my mind. Yeah, I mean, it's not, because if I say, like, the character of Susan Lord Parks, what does she want more than anything else in the world? Oh my gosh, she wants to cross the room to get to Emily. So what's the event of the play going to be? Her struggle to cross the room to get to Emily. Yeah. You see how it kind of worked? That's how I do it anyway. Does anybody else have a, 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 another way to do it that might be helpful? No? Like, what do they want? They want to, you know, they want to get to Moscow. Right? That's an old one. You know, so they, we see them struggling trying to get to Moscow and how successful they are. You know, they don't make it, they make it, whatever. That's the story of the Does that help? Does that help? That's what I, that's why I base it in character instead of like theme. Like I want to talk about freedom. I, I never, that would never help me. Or slavery. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? So what is this person, what does this woman want more than anything else in the world? What is she doing to get it? Then you have a series of events. And you can do that with every single character. That's what I do with them. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, I'm Alexis. Hi, Alexis. You've been here before, yes? No. Oh, welcome. I wanted to come last week. It was my birthday, though, so I had to do one birthday. birthday. Happy birthday. It was your birthday on Monday? Yeah. Oh, my happy birthday. My mom's looking up and going, like, what friends want to see? Okay. I can leave them. No, I can't. Yay for your mom, too. Yeah. Kick it the butt. Go, girl. Good for her. Thanks, Mom. So Alexa, so what's your question? the story. What's the story? Well, the characters <coughs> want to go to Pizza Hut, and so they walk down the street. I mean, it's boring. I tell, you know, but it's very simple. So I try to keep it simple. And if, yeah, right, if suddenly they, like, find themselves in the space-time continuum where, you know, they're rocketing through the universe, okay, that's, you know, I, I don't know what you mean. I, I, um, I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean jump out of time like actually like jump time like they do in like jazz or blues like actual like uh, uh, that's not that's still in time but or do you mean like mixed sort of time periods like what do you mean mixed time? like okay like see maybe it's just people in 1860s start to speak in a way that doesn't sound like 1860s is that what you're talking about yeah Again, oh, so I think I know what you mean. What I do, like I said with Emily and Emily Dickinson, tell all the truth but tell it slant. 
success in circuit lies. I really do. So I just try to tell the story as simply as possible. And sometimes the most basic way to tell a story is to, you know, do it like an Ornette Coleman jazz solo. Because that's the story that you're trying to tell. So I don't set out to be, you know, a person who's doing cool things with time but I'm just trying to tell the story as truthfully as possible, and oftentimes that means telling it, you know, like that. See what I'm saying? So I would just say just stick to basic, your basic storytelling beats, and if shit starts to happen, whoa, include it. Don't push it out and say that doesn't belong here. Include it, because it is probably part of the story. Okay, just like the past is part of this moment, and we're thinking about the future, and all that's happening at once. I've, you know, people like Virginia Woolf. You know, it's, it's a practice. It's, people have been doing this for many, many, many years. Sort of in and out of time periods. Virginia Woolf is a big one. She's one. You know, she's also kind of had a mental problem, so we'll be mindful. <laughs> but thanks, that's a good question. Thank you. Yes, Lynn. So Lynn is now acting in a play, which is giving you a lot of joy. Yeah. And yeah, and but because she's been working real hard in this other capacity as an actor, now it's time. She hasn't been doing as much writing as she usually does, and now it's time. She's like, okay, now I'm ready to start writing again. How do I begin again? That's such a great question because we're always beginning again. I mean, whether you write, if even if you write every day, you're always or practice your instrument, or whatever, every day, right? You're always beginning again. It's always the morning when you have to pick up the guitar or sit at the computer or take out your quill pen or whatever you write with and start again, right? So how do you begin again? I would say um, gently start with something that you feel happy to be working on. You know, it's no good if you start on something like, oh God, I hate working on this. You know, I'm, I, was, I have the same question about my work because I have some guitar Stuff, stuff, I have to learn. And I haven't had a lot of time, and I have to get to it. So maybe think of different ways to get back into it. Like um, maybe just, uh, is it a play that you're work you want to get started on again? Yeah. Or a, whatever it is, it yes, could be a play, novel, movie, whatever. Yeah. So maybe um, write a very brief synopsis of the play down on an index card and carry it around in your bag. And maybe, do you ride the subway at all? I mean, do you have one? Maybe when you're sitting on the subway, just read the card <coughs> over and over. You know, that's like a warm up thing. Maybe when you're walking down the street, just tell yourself a story over and over and over. This can also work, Emily, for what is the story? You can say, what is the story? Well, the story is about Jane and she, what does she want? What does she want? You're walking down the street, I mean, you don't have to talk with your, to yourself with your mouth moving, unless, of course, you want to put on your, you have those things, and then you can pretend you're talking to someone, which is great. <laughs> now I talk to myself all the time, and people are like, oh, she's got an important conversation, she's got a phone call, but I'm talking to myself. So you can do that, you can walk down the street, okay, what's the story, what's the story, right? Or just repeat, this is a story about this, 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 and then in the end, this happens, right? You know, so you can do that. So that's gently, right? And then set yourself, um, get back into your writing. My timer. Yeah, gently though, 15 minutes. 
maybe, and if you're excited, you know, 15 minutes more than once a day. But in the beginning, maybe only 15 minutes a day, beep, 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 it goes off, yay, I've done my bit. I can go and do whatever I want now. Does that make sense? Yeah. So very sense. gently, so we find different ways to approach to get back in. Instead of just, uh, now I'm gonna like, uh, five hours at my desk, go! And then you wonder, why, why do I hate this? You know what I mean? No, really, I mean, this is what we say. And we're all saying it. I can hear your voices all day. Ah, you can hear the cries of artists all over the world. Um, but that's why, you know. Wait so, yourself. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was a great, great question. Thank you. I got one from Twitter. Yeah. Who's, who's on Twitter interface or whatever it's called? The Twitter web. We'll figure it out before next time. We're going to figure it out. We will figure it out. So Alicia Nash. Tweeted in. Name sounds familiar. And asked, uh, "What are some things you do to get you unstuck?" Uh, and then clarifies, "If if you are stuck, is it a good strategy to look at the structure of something else that you want your work to look more like? If you want it to be?" That's great, Alicia Nash. Does she say where she is? Where she's from? No. She's from somewhere. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you for, for New York. Oh, yay! I see, I knew it. Um, <laughs> but um, that's a great question that Alicia, Alicia? Alicia. Alicia is asking um, that when we're stuck, what do we do when we're stuck? And what are some strategies to getting unstuck? And is it helpful to, she said, look at the structure. Look at something of, like similar to what you want your own stuff to be. Is that a proactive way to deal? Yeah, and it's really, Alicia, it's a feel thing. So when you're stuck, I'm guessing, we feel, how, well, how might we feel when we're stuck? It sounds like, you said constipated? That's exactly what I was thinking, right. And how does that feel? Has anybody ever been constipated? I mean, sorry, but we just pulled in the theater. <laughs> yes, you've been constipated, right. And I, yeah, I mean, it, it happens. I mean, you know, it, it happens. It happens. And it's like, because, I mean, but literally, you're full of shit at that yeah, point, right? You're full of shit. And it's like, oh, man, you kind of can't, you know, it's hard to move. So it doesn't feel good. Right. So it's important to keep your uh, keep monitoring how you feel because there are lots of ways to get unstuck, but we want to think of things that are going to feel good for you. So it's a great strategy to look at someone else's work, but sometimes you look at someone else's work and you feel really <coughs> shitty because look, she did it and I can't and you feel worse. So stop looking at somebody else's work. Then. Okay. Okay. So we're going to do things that make you feel, I would say again, write down a, a description of your play on a little index card and carry it around with you. As you walk around town, you live in New York City, as you walk around town or ride the subway, repeat your story to yourself, okay? Um, also, people talk about affirmations. Has anybody ever heard of that? You know, So you write in your notebook, I love my play and I'm having fun writing it. <laughs> I know, it's yeah. funny. I knew you would laugh. How did I know you would laugh? But, it's, have you done it? Have you ever done it before? Um, no, but I, I can feel that that's not right. And this, right. this, right. right, and this laughter you have, it's like this tightness in you that, that put, that, you know, pushes against, <laughs> I can't do it. <laughs> try it, you. Try it, try it, try it. Because what we want to get is a softening to go back to the stool analogy because that's what they do give you I hear you know you see other commercial TV stool softener you talking you about a laxative well, <laughs> well a softener a, so a relaxative a relaxative and a softener and because there's a tightness and a constriction in you because you're stuck sometimes you got to tell yourself things just take time okay things just take time um, but while they're taking their time do things that are loving and comforting to you, to you. So I would say, if you want, read other people's work if that helps. Maybe go to see other people's plays if it helps. If it doesn't, don't. Say, I'm gonna leave it alone for one whole day and then come back to it. Also in my notebook, this is what I do. I write down reasons why I love my play. I love my play because, right? Even though, motherfucker, I can't. I love my play because it talks about whatever characters that that I love. There's a there's a there's a 
a character in there that I adore, things like that, right? We start talking like that. Reasons why um, I can see myself writing my play and I'm having a lot of fun doing it. The idea is to hypnotize yourself into a mindset where you are free. This works for life too. You want to hypnotize, any, it works for anything pretty much. You want to hip, you want to regroove your brain. Your groove in your brain now is something that's causing you to be stuck. What we want to do, Alicia, is help you regroove your brain so that the messages, the recurring messages you're hearing from yourself are messages of encouragement and positive messages. That's it. It's like a record. my students from NYU. Yes, ma'am. asking how do we know when we're done, when we're writing a play or a novel or a story or whatever, and you, if you feel like you've gotten to the end or you're not feeling like it's the end. Yeah, but then you I feel? don't know Right. Okay. Well, it's like dating, isn't it? or marriage, you know, or, you know, anything. Like the moment you know, this is over, I'm done, I'm done here. It's that feeling you get that it's come to a close, you know what I mean? So with the character though, again, it helps if you identify, just for the purposes of a particular project, what this character wants more than anything. And we're gonna watch her or him move toward that goal, okay? And that's, that's one way of knowing. When they've sort of crossed that finish line, then they've reached an ending, okay? The thing is for something like a television show, you wanna create a goal line that they cross, but we're still interested in them continuing. Then that's a different kind of, different kind of issue. Um, but does, does, that, does that help? I mean, this character could go on and on, but has she, does she reach some kind of conclusion? She starts out wanting something. She starts out having a dream of something. Oh, I, want, I really want to, again, get to Moscow. And then she like, you don't think she gets what she's going for? Okay. They don't actually get the goal. But does she find something else instead of what she's looking for? Okay, then that's, then that's it. Then show her finding something other than what she's looking for and some kind of, she's making some kind of peace with that. And that is the end of the, this particular play, story, episode, whatever. Does that make sense? So you can feel it reaching a kind of conclusion. It's a feel thing, just like, you know, dating, you know. Or anyway, anyway, not to be like tragic about dating, but like dating like you're on a date and it's like time to go home, you know, and you guys don't live together. It's like. Right, okay, time to go home. <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. So it's like that. It just it reaches a point, a feel, there's a feeling that happens. Okay? It's also a technical thing. You know, you need to write a little bit more or show what you're not showing yet. Right? Okay, okay, good. Good. So just do that. And I'll work on remembering your name. There's a memory, there's a whole technique I read this summer, the Einstein, you know, Moonwalking with Einstein, that book about the memory palace and how we're supposed to, you know. So I'm, I'm using my memory palace to remember your name. And I can't think of a, a way to do it yet because I gotta break it down. Into things I need. Okay, anyway, I won't do it, I won't take it to your time. Anybody else? Not in Twitter, I'll go on Yeah, and then we'll take it to Twitter, yeah. Hi. You're Jill. Where are you from? <laughs> you are. You sound like you're from England. Hey, Jill. Hi, I'm Ah! 
Heidi Griffith, our awesome, one of our awesome casting directors, who I have known for ages and ages. Oh, wow, hey, 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 hey. Okay. Right, 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 right. Yes, Jill, that's a really good uh, question, Jill. So Jill's writing some short stories, and her question is, do should one write sort of uh, with the whole thing kind of sort of all figured out before one starts, or should we let it grow organically and just kind of see where it goes? And um, I'm more, I mean, there are different, you know, camps. I'm in the tribe of the middle. I'm in the middle of the tribe. So I'm in the I'm in the kind of sort of no, and kind of sort of really not. But I do like to know sort of like I was saying, this happens, this happens, this happens, and in the end, this happens. And I might write that out on some index cards or whatever, and have sort of um, tent poles, or if I'm hanging a sheet on a line, I have clothes pins. You can think of that. But all the other little clothes pins, the magic happens in between those big clothes pens, those big markers. So I might know, for example, with Top Dog Underdog, I knew the end before I started writing the play, but for me, the magic was all the things in between that I did not plot out and figure out before I sat down to start writing. So I knew, boom, they're brothers, <coughs> boom, one kills the other one. And I knew which one killed which one. But I didn't, but all that other stuff, I was just figuring out as I wrote it. So I would say, do both. And just because you outline or whatever we call it, want to call it, outline, doesn't mean you can't still discover. You know, you don't have to outline every freaking beat. You know, that's called, you know, TV. Not, not even TV. I'm writing for TV, yo. I'm not outlining every beat. I'm, I'm just going, you know, basic. I mean, for me to write it, to present it to producers, yeah, they want to know because it's a lot of, it's like, okay. You know, you gotta say, uh, yeah, and here we're gonna have the horse race, and we're gonna have the buggies and the carriages. They wanna know up front. Um, but, um, but, you know, every little beat, we still discover, you know, for myself, I just wanna know sort of what happened, where do we open, where do we close, kind of what happens in the middle, and then the joy of it is, and that's just the plot, and then we get to the dialogue, which is a whole another joy. So a little of both. So I would say, if you're not an outliner kind of person, go ahead and outline. Try it. I mean, it doesn't have to be Roman numerals, unless you're Roman. Um, you know, or unless you're like the Pope. Right, the Pope probably still does that. The Pope, the Pope. Um, shout out to the Pope. Who my son calls the Hope. The Hope, the Hope. I'm like, honey, it's the Pope. It's like, the Hope, the Hope. So he's the Hope. Um, cool, for Hope, he's pretty cool. Um, but um, I would say, so I, you know, just you can number your scenes. I think that's helpful. Or number your moments in your short story. First, this happened. Two, then this happens, and we see her. Whatever. Okay. I think it's important to try to have an end, even if it's not the right ending. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Just put something there. Like we're in a car. We're going to California. At least we're, we know that we're not going. You know, we know we're going west. That way. You know what I mean? We're not going east or south or whatever. Okay, okay thanks. Good question. So, Twitter, what do you got, Brittany? All right, so Crystal and Adams. Crystal, is that Crystal from New Jersey? Yeah. Yeah, that's our Crystal. Hey, right, Crystal. She comes here, so when she awesome. can't make Yeah. Uh, so, basically, she's trying to start a new play. Um, I'm raving a Crystal. She's planning the reading. Oh, oh. She dreamed it years ago in its entirety. Uh, so, she knows her two female characters. Talk to your characters. I'm just saying to develop your characters. Uh, I mean, people. Some people say you can. Um, Crystal's like, how do we develop 
our characters. How do you find out about our characters? You can talk to them or interview them. Some people do long bi bio like essay form biography. I find that's interesting and useful, but because you're not because a character is a living thing, a living person, it's helpful to have a conversation with them. So you, because then you're actually imagining them talking, which is helpful instead of imagining them flat on a page or just in your mind. So Crystal, I would say try interviewing them. Talk to them. Like invite them, you know, take them out to coffee at Starbucks. Go to Starbucks. Do you have a Starbucks in New Jersey? And go to Starbucks and take your character out. I know. I got it. Just to see. When Crystal comes, we'll bust on her together. We'll make fun of her because that's what we do. Um, so Crystal, take your character out to Starbucks. And if you only have a little bit of time, take like one you know, choose only one to talk to every coffee session. And just talk to them. And then write down what they say, of course. And then you'll find out about them. Like you're interviewing them. That really works. It's fun. And you get them talking, which is what you want if it's going to be a play. You want to get them talking. You want to catch them talking. And once they start talking, then you can just listen. And then you can write down what they say. And then you have your play. Does that make sense? Crystal? If it doesn't make sense, tweet us back. And tell us, like, what? I don't know. What? <coughs> oh, John, John, and she's on the case. <laughs> Anybody else? Eh? Eh? Yeah, Matt. Matt has a question. Our cameraman. Uh, so, what is your editing process? Do you, do you edit bit by bit as you write something? That's great. Do yeah. you edit and wait and do it all at once? Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. great question, Matt. Oh boy. And you're your camera you're a film guy, I'm guessing, because you got the camera he's stuff. A writer too, he's, a, he's a writer. Oh, he's a writer too. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, go on, you were gonna say something? Uh, I'm a Renaissance. You're a writer. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Is that like were you doing this? That gesture? <laughs> okay. Um <laughs> Do you play an instrument also? Uh piano and I sing. Oh, okay. So you are a Renaissance. Do you do like archery or do you have some kind of skill like that? Like fencing? What? Do you do fencing also or archery? What else? What's your, what's your sport? What's your sport? Khaki sack? What's your sport? Do I look like I have a sport? Yes. What's your sport? Khaki sack? I, I, uh, I, I'm a lumberjack. Oh, good. There you go. I dropped to New Hampshire and I split Are you serious? Yeah, I'm serious. Okay, see, I told you. I See? Okay. And he's a whoa, whoa. <laughs> She's like, whoa, you're a lizard? Yeah, yeah. We can see you up there. Okay. Okay, cool. All right. So, um, so how do we edit? I would suggest editing. I, feel like I would suggest editing, and when you're when you reach the end. Okay. So there are two kinds of courage. One is the courage. I mean, when you're an artist, I think one is the courage of the writing part. You're a writer, writing, and the other is the courage of rewriting. Okay. So get the writing, get that draft done, get to the end, and then. Right. Then edit. Then cut. Then whatever. Get all the way to the end, even if the end isn't the right end. You just, it's like I gotta put some shit down there, right? Okay, good. Cross the finish line, and then you have an entire piece, and you can better uh, edit it and work with it. Okay. Okay. So that, that's what I would. That's what I would do. Uh, rewriting while you're writing is really tricky because you could spend your whole career rewriting that first sentence. That first line, trying to get it perfect. Good question. Is Crystal happy? Is she coming back? Yeah, Alexis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, I know. I know. A lot of people do that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people. Yeah, do I ever use random prompts to get me writing or to get my students writing? My, I have a random prompt that is, uh, it's okay. I have a random prompt, but we do, this is great because when there are distractions, it's an opportunity to focus. So, yeah. so I do have a random prompt. It's the best one I've ever, I only use one, and I use it all the time. And it consists of getting a timer and sitting my tilt down in the chair and writing. That's the random prompt. Do you understand? That's the best one. 
because other stuff is just like random. I know, maybe, yeah, a, a brilliant story is going to come out of a random prompt when I'm told to write about what to do. Okay, yeah, great. But I enjoy just doing the thing. You know? So it doesn't, it's not random, you know, it's, it's just, it's, kind, it's simple. It's a very simple way of working. Too much. 
You know, I really don't, it's not that kind of thought. It's more, I was, at, I was talking to a writer a couple days when I was in uh, somewhere, Pennsylvania, at Franklin Marshall College. And I was talking to a writer there and asking her where her eyes went when she was thinking about her writing. What actually were her eyes doing? I said, were they, are they like scanning the horizon, thinking like this? I mean, you can try it. Like, look across the room. You don't have to look at me. You can look like beyond me at the wall over here, over there. Just try, focus there, right? There. Now focus more, soft focus, where your sort of eyes are like kind of looking up. Can, does your brain feel like it's doing different things? Right. Okay, so when I write, my eyes are more turned up. Right? Instead of that kind of thinking, right? It's this kind of thinking. Right. You see, and that's, so my, most of my, when I'm talking to a character, when I'm writing, um, when I'm stuck, maybe I'm doing this. But I know that one of the ways to get unstuck to answer Alicia's question is actually change what your eyes are doing. So instead of staring straight ahead, trying to find it, I gotta find it, you can sort of allow your eyes to relax a little bit and roll slightly up into your what they call the third eye point. It's, it's relaxing. And you can hear things, you can hear better. You can hear your small, still voice within. You don't want to do too much and like make your eyes get stuck up there. But that's a good question. So we can try that when we're stuck. Actually, this is great. Yeah, then it should have been back to the page. And what will happen is you'll start actually writing with your eyes are going to be more turned upwards. You're not really looking at what you're writing. You're more sort of reading it off the wall. Yeah. Yeah. So, and but it's Try Renaissance man, man. Try. Good question. Anybody else? Yes, Garland again. You guys have? Yes. Uh, well, how do I feel about dramaturgs and dramaturgy? We love dramaturgs. I mean, anybody, if they're good, if they're cool, you know what I mean? If they're not cool, you know. They're like anybody, right? If they're cool, if they're like, if you're doing a Shakespeare and they're really helpful and try to work with the director of the team and see, you know, help the team accomplish its goal. Sure. Yeah, yeah. We didn't have one. We didn't have, we didn't have one. But the piece before that, I worked with uh, John Diaz, who's a great dramaturg. He's also an artistic director of the Two River Theater out in New Jersey. Awesome, and I love working with him. He was the dramaturg on Top Dog Underdog. So, I mean, basically for me, it's just a smart person in the room that you can hang out with. Um, I, I love dramaturgs; they're great. We're only there to help. <laughs> You're gonna do it. Oh, no, oh. Not defensive. Oh, not defensive at all. I just feel go ahead. I'm just curious. Get well, just, yeah. no, I mean, I am slightly defensive, but go ahead. I mean, I feel like a lot of times, you know, it's, it's literally our job. To to assist you in any way, shape, or form, you know, in this mental brain space, but also sort of physically to be on your team in the room. And I find so often that playwrights of every different shape and color, you know, they kind of puff up their chest and feel as though this is not the case. And it, it's, it's always just kind of like a conversation amongst dramaturgs of how we can change that perception. So I just wanted to say, we're here for you. No, but that's very interesting because I love people, I mean, I mean, the thing about being a playwright, in my experience, is I'm all alone in the room. I mean, they're all doing their thing, the actors, and the directors got her fabulous assistant. You know, I just sit here, and I'm going to be my talk to except the stage manager, and she's busy, you know what I mean, and her assistant is busy. So I love having drum to because you're like, so, you know, when I change that word, does that work for you? You know, this song, it's like a friend. It's like, it's great. I know, you love drum tricks. As long as they don't secretly want to like be a playwright too and write your play. Right, right, that's right. kind of where it gets iffy. Right, yeah. So as long as there's separation. And that goes for everybody in the room though, right? Yeah. I mean, as long as, the, as long as the playwright doesn't secretly want to be an actor and act in the play, 
you know, as long as the director doesn't secretly want to be a playwright, and you know, as long as somebody, people are not being secretly secretive. <laughs> Right? How do you take feedback? You like, I mean, and if it, and if it makes sense to what you're doing, right? Feedback, yeah. Right, exactly, exactly, exactly. Are we like totally garbly good with the sound? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, girl. I'm sorry. But girl is just talking about feedback and how important it is to, he takes feedback well when he's got a good trust thing going on with the person who's giving feedback, when he's, when his feedback kind of makes sense to what he's doing, um, and what happens when it's feedback that doesn't make sense. I mean, I, you know, I really believe in, uh, I was on the phone with some TV people the other day, and, you know, they were like, oh, you're getting a little defensive, and I called, I said, in my neighborhood, it's called pushback, and yes, <laughs> we are doing pushback right now, because what am I supposed to do? If you're hired me to bring it, I'm bringing it, and we, it, it should be a conversation, not just me taking your notes, and through the pushback, actually, came the best ideas, you know, so a lot of times, you get feedback, and the assumption is, just take the note, you know, it would be so much better if they just did the note. But the people who are smart, the producers and drama who are smart, and directors are giving you feedback, hoping for that pushback. And out of that pushback will come something better than what you had and what they're suggesting. I mean, yeah, you know. And, that, and that's something that drama can really to tell the playwright, that it's a suggestion designed to encourage maybe another way of looking at what you're doing, you know? Just tell them, because a lot of players just don't know. Players just don't know, so, you know. Oh, oh, I gotta, I gotta go to a meeting about kindergarten. We'll see you, uh, not next week, but uh, the weekend, I'm sorry. Is it, or is it next week? It is next October week. 5th. Thank you, Matt. October 5th, we'll see you next week at five o'clock. Thank you guys for coming, you guys are great, thank you. Woo! Yay! Woo! Well done.